Hi everybody, it's Sandy and I'm back with another video. This time we're going to be coloring realistic fruit with Copic markers. I was inspired to do this because it's the beginning of a new year and I've been trying to eat better. So fruit is something that I like more than vegetables. So I tend to try to lean toward at least eating more fruit. And that's one of my goals for this year. So I am coloring this pear and I did it based on looking on the internet for pictures. It's one of the best ways to learn how to color anything that you're looking for. What, what does it really look like? And it really helped me because I could see that there were all these different kind of pinkish colors and yellow greenish colors on pears. So I started by adding those colors down first in an early layer and then adding a lot of yellows on top and just keep coloring over them and over them and over them. It both smooths the color out as well as builds up this, this kind of rich texture, I guess. Sometimes when we're coloring, we try to get rid of that extra texture. And the more color I put on here, you can see it's just starting to get that mottled look, M-O-T-T-L-E-D. And that's something that often when we're you know coloring skin, we don't want it to have that kind of a texture. But on pears, it works really, really well. On a number of fruits, actually, it works really well. So I'm just kind of coloring until I get that much color on there. And I don't have my pinkish colors evenly around it because pears aren't even. Mother Nature doesn't do things that way. So pull up a picture on the internet and help yourself to see what it actually looks like, not just what you think a pear looks like. So I've even decided to add some spots to it using first a dark brown in the darkest areas, and then I switched to a lighter brown as it moved into the medium tones. And that's one way that I can make the the spots even look like they're going from light to dark and it helps with that dimension, creating that whole dimension across the entire piece of fruit, little by little. So the highlight on it is just in the center in that bottom section. You can see when you look back from it, it looks pretty realistic. Let's move on to the peach. And I started with a kind of a peachy wash on the bottom, but then I'm gonna start going in with some darker colors. Ah, oh, I know, scary. So an R43, which is a pinkish color, very light red. And now I'm going in with a really darker red, which would scare most people when they're trying to make a peachy, orangey type of color. But watch what happens as I build the color layers up. Peaches also, I noticed when I was looking at photographs, have more of a linear texture on them. A lot of times they'll have more of, they're, they're really soft and subtle, but they're stripes kind of. So I'm leaving some of those strokes in the underpainting portion, in the, in the under color, and then coloring over that with yellow, because that's gonna soften all of those, but it'll retain some of that kind of striped look that, that peaches can have. And not every peach is the same, depending on the, the brand and the type and where it's grown and all that. You'll get all different kinds of colors and textures and things, so look at them for real. Now this is something I just bought, which is a zero colorless blender marker in the Copic shape, which is the square shaped marker, so that I could do little things like this, little details. I, I was looking at a picture with some uh, little water droplets on it, and I was trying to mimic what the water droplets would look like, and they came out better than I thought. I started by just erasing part of it with the colorless blender and then adding some shadows underneath of it and then softening those shadows out. And, you know, it started looking okay, but it looked like it really, to make it look like water, of course needed the Signo pen, which ends up on just about everything around here. So I added just little tiny highlights and look at how realistic those water droplets look. That actually shocked me. I was very surprised. And I didn't practice coloring all these beforehand. I just kind of turned the camera on and went. So sometimes I get surprised when that happens and I don't, I don't have a real plan for what the video is gonna be. Now a lemon is something that you would think is just yellow, just one color of yellow around the whole thing. But if you look really closely at lemon photos, they, you know, they do obviously have a shape. How do you create that shape? I'm just doing it with a bunch of different yellows. And then once I get kind of that basic shape in there, I'm using that original marker, that Copic original marker with the hard nib to create some, in the dark areas, I'm creating lighter dots. 
because lemons have these pores. If you zoom in on a lemon photo or look at a lemon itself, they have pores. They're kind of like, like really giant pores if you would look at our skin. And I'm, in the dark areas, I'm using the colorless blender. And then in the medium areas, I'm going to use a medium yellow. And, you know, just keep building it around that way so you don't get really jarring dots, but you get enough dots that you get the idea that there's a real texture there. And look how much this is looking like a lemon that you would have in your head, in your mind. And it, it's so much more than if it was just marker strokes. So that texture really adds a whole lot to it, even though a lot of people will never notice it, it's it's something that really helps to give it realism. So in the lightest areas, I'm going for a lighter yellow to make those pores, and then leaving a couple of highlight spots. But you noticed when I originally colored it, the whole thing was yellow, so those white spots are actually not white, they're really yellow. And then I went in with a B60, which is a very grayed out blue, but very, very light, to just add a few spots, uh, just the, the poor dots in the darkest areas. And I think that really added a lot to it. So next are the cherries, the easiest part. I've done lots of little round red objects and all sorts of things. We've just gotten done with Christmas videos, so lots of berries done. This is my favorite combination of reds. Uh, the trick to learn here is when you're doing fruits, on all these fruits, I've kind of left an outside edge lighter on all of them, if you go back and watch again, instead of coloring all the way up to the edge of the piece of fruit. And that allows a highlight to appear from outside. And so it gives them that, that roundness, that depth. So now for all of my leaves, I'm just gonna color them really quickly with a YG63 and add some simple shadows to them. Because once you put this much effort into the fruit, you can put a lot into the leaves, but nobody's going to be noticing them because they're too busy looking at the gorgeous fruit that you just colored. So YG67 is the shadow color, so I'm just going to add that in the bottoms of each one of those sections and finish that up. And I'm going to be trimming all of this out, obviously, <laughs> if you were wondering why I was coloring outside the lines. So the cards are all going to have these fussy cut out because they're really simple shapes to cut. So here is the perfect pair. So I colored two of the pairs to have two of them in love. And my little, uh, my little hearts are all yellow on these cards, yellow or red, depending on which was the primary color in the, the card itself. And there's that peach. Look at that water. Oh my gosh. Surprised even myself. The designs on all these, I just kept them really simple, half black, half white, with the fruit on it, so it'll really pop against that really simple stark color. And the fronts are all cut just a little bit short, so that strip of color on the inside of the card, the cardstock, just shows through the front. Really super simple. Here's a couple more of my recent coloring videos if you wanted to check anything out. And I would love it if you would like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's all down in the doobly-doo on YouTube below this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Have a really fantastic day!